How's it going? Today we are planting two brand new varieties of perennials out here in the South Garden. So we've got a Agastache or Agastache, I've heard it pronounced both ways, also known as Hyssop, called Meant to Be Royal Raspberry is the variety. And then we've got a new variety of Heliopsis that's so unusual and gorgeous. This one's called Bit of Honey. Now I have varieties of the same types of plants already planted out here in the South Garden and they're doing really well, but I'm excited to try these to see how they do and I think they especially look beautiful together because they look so different and both of these varieties they're new for 2023 we got our hands on them a little early to try them out so I'm really excited to kind of report back through the season how they do for us because you'll start to see these show up at garden centers next season so let's start with the meant to be royal raspberry so something about the hyssop plants they're very nostalgic to me they have a very distinct smell not like in the air they don't perfume the air but when you kind of mess with their leaves and mess with the plant i just love it it reminds me of my childhood actually um, they're very drought tolerant once they're established today i'm going to run our drip system the way i would run it for most perennials that want consistent water but um, after the first season after they've established a little bit i might pull some of that drip tubing because they may not need quite as much they want a well draining area but they grow about 28 to 32 inches tall. So, I mean, pretty good sized perennial here. I think they're really gonna fill in this area beautifully and then hopefully kind of want these to touch. So they look like one type of perennial moving into the next type of perennial. They attract a ton of pollinators. So honeybees, um, lots of different um, butterflies, hummingbirds, same as this one. I think it's gonna be a really active area out here in the South Garden. Zone five through nine on these. So very winter hardy. We garden in a zone six, so they should do great. Now I think the name on these is kind of perfect. You can see that these blooms are just starting to open. The rest of these are just buds. They're not blooming yet. And typically these are a little ahead of schedule. Typically they start blooming midsummer and go all the way through fall. So we should have a beautiful color show. I kind of appreciate perennials that do that because I won't have to come out here and shear these back. We just shear them back once a year and then we watch them grow um, and kind of fill in this space and then start blooming midsummer and then they just keep on going. You don't have to deadhead them for them to keep blooming. They are deer resistant for those of you who deal with deer. We do not here so that's not really a concern but I know a lot of you guys uh, deal with deer pressure but I just think they have the prettiest color flower. I think it's going to be really striking. And even when they're in their great big domes, they uh, usually have blooms from about like a third of the way up the shrub up to the top. So two thirds of the dome will just be covered in these blooms. Last thing, these are tolerant of high pH soil, which is something that we have here. They are more tolerant than this one right here, although Heliopsis does well. They're fairly adaptable, I find. Um, also heat and drought tolerant and all of those good things. But you you can see how gorgeous these two blooms are going to be together both very vibrant and striking now for the bit of honey heliopsis so first off the blooms which can be three to three and a half inches wide these are blooming again they're a little ahead of schedule than they normally would they would normally start blooming midsummer through fall again this is going to be a glorious show through most of our summer and fall um, but even before they start to bloom i mean look at the leaves on this I think that's what makes this plant so unique. The leaves are white, and then they have this deep green veining. And I just don't expect to see it in a Heliopsis. I kind of think like a Caladium or a Coleus when I look at something like this. But here it is out in kind of like no protection area in full sun, and it's gonna love it right here. Now this stays a little bit more compact than other Heliopsis varieties you might be familiar familiar with. We have the Tuscan Sun in the other section of the South Garden. We planted it last summer and it was beautiful. Uh, but this one stays just a little bit more tidy. So usually about 24, 28 inches tall and about 28 inches, maybe a little bit wider. Uh, I have spaced things fairly close together out here because I want them to kind of intermingle a bit. I also don't want there to be space for weeds to grow out here. And if you don't leave space if you shade the ground and kind of plant things a little bit thicker then you typically don't have as big of a problem with weeds so these will also um, attract pollinators zone four through nine or four through eight i can't remember four through eight or nine um, so very winter hardy again and i think they're going to be perfect here now in this same area i do have some cat's pajamas nepeta kind of planted right in front of both of these and that will have purple blooms through the summer so we'll have purple pink yellow and then i think i can't remember if it's a white or a yellow echinacea is to the left of the hyssop here so i think we're going to have a really wonderful collection of tough perennials which is what i'm going for here so let's get these in the ground and then we're going to run some drip system or drip tubing and I'll show you what it looks like.
planted, watered. They look so good, you guys. I love this whole spot. And I don't know if you could really see, like if you had a good view of what was going on in front, but here are the Cat's Pajamas Nepeta, which will fill in this space here and be the nice low level. So we'll have a taller level here, lower level, and then the grass pathways start. And then right over here, this is where the, oh, did I just step on it? I did. <laughs> Stepped on one of the echinacea. I do have echinacea over here. Hopefully it's real tough, because here's one. <laughs> And then there's one here, here, and then there's one barely starting to peek through right here. That's why I didn't place the um, hyssop differently. And I'm thinking once they bloom and I figure out whether they're white or yellow, I will fill in this space right in here with a couple more. I think I, I did. I had one more here, but it just didn't come back. So anyway, we had a little bit of a, a testing period with water with the sprinklers versus drip in here and I do think that this area stayed a little bit too saturated last year and that was the demise of some of the plants that we had a little bit close to the grass so anyway now I'm going to run our drip now we already have our drip system kind of set up in this area you can see I already cut some out of this space because I wanted to redo it um, but you might be in a situation where like ours is connected into an irrigation system but you might connectors into a hose. Um, you know, put a splitter on it, one goes to your hose that you use and one goes to your drip system, which is what we did in our townhouse for a lot of years. Either way works really well. So what I'm gonna be using in terms of supplies, let me get closer here. I've got couplers, and I don't know exactly how it's gonna go, but I've got tea couplers, straight couplers, landscape staples, my Felcos, and then drip tubing that has the emitter holes every 18 inches. Wow. So, oh. 12 inches. Aaron just corrected me. It's actually holes every 12 inches. We're trying that out. We've been doing the every 18 inch approach for a long time. Um, anyway, we just bought a couple rolls of this just to see what kind of difference. We're constantly tweaking our drip system, just constantly. So anyway, like right here, let me just kind of show you how I'm gonna tap into what's currently here. So I've got some drip tube right here. I'm gonna cut this just a bit because I wanna put in a T-coupler here. So that goes in on this side. This is just a half inch supply line, which I hope I didn't get a bunch of dirt in. No, oh, I think it looks pretty clean. That'll go in on the other side. And then sometimes we will use silver clamps right here, but we've got a lot going on in this area. I don't think we're gonna have enough, like too much pressure. I think it'll be fine. And then we will grab our drip tube here. And pop it on this side. So you'll notice that this looks a little bit smaller and the color's a little bit different than this one. This brand is Digcorp um, with the holes every 18 inches, which you can get at Home Depot. This is Netafim. It's a different brand with the holes every 12 inches, although you can get Digcorp in every 12 inch spacing too. I don't know what the difference is of all these things. That's why we like to test things to see if something works better than another. So right there, we just tapped into our system, use a landscape staple to go down like that. And then, We'll take the roll. Usually you want to kind of un, this kind of can be a little bit of an irritating process. Anybody who's done drip will know, Erin is dying laughing at me. Why are you laughing at me right now? Because you always unroll it the wrong way. Well, no I didn't. <laughs> Check it out. I'm gonna do this and it's gonna be smooth. See? See that smoothness? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna weave it in here. How'd I do, Aaron? Good. Yeah. Oops. So right here, you can see where I cut the other side. Uh, we just had a little system of drip in here that I wanted to do a different configuration. So I'm gonna cut this one, put in another T coupler so I can go off in this direction. So we'll get that all done and then you'll be able to see it on top of the soil, how it all ends up looking. So here we go. The drip is done. Everything is just kind of tucked in. The last thing we need to do, it really in this whole area is mulch. And we've been using wood chips up to this point. We do have one more pile of wood chips just to kind of spread in some thinner areas. And then I do think we're gonna come through with a darker colored uh, mulch or compost or something like that and put it over the top of the wood chips, which honestly, I think will make plants that have a variegated leaf or a lighter colored leaf, it'll make them pop a whole lot more. Uh, but let me explain the drip really quick because I did run it a little bit different than we normally do. We, 
usually talk about running a drip in a grid pattern so that the water uh, doesn't really end anywhere. You know, the water comes in and then all the drip tubing that you use is all kind of connected to each other. But what I did in this space, we've got a three quarter inch supply line right here. So quite a bit of water runs through that. And then we teed off of that with half inch and brought it this way. And then that's where our first tee went in. So that's where, when it goes off this direction, it's attaching to the rest of our grid. And then I ran a new piece over here where we teed in again. And this piece right here is also going off to where we already have our grid. So the only thing I ran that's not really attached to the grid system is maybe like a, I don't know, 20, maybe 25 foot run of drip tube, which we've found doesn't really hurt. Uh, the water coverage is still really good. You just wouldn't want to run it like 200 feet off of your grid system. Um, so if you just need to like go off and hit a little area of your flower bed, don't worry if it's not going to attach into your grid system. So far it's done fine for us. So anyway, super excited about these plants, you guys. Um, again, these are new for 2023, so you won't see them out in the garden centers this year, but you should start seeing them next year. Um, definitely ones to keep your eyes open for next season and we'll give you updates as the season goes on. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.